The recovery process after ACL reconstruction is lengthy and can seem daunting at first, but knowing what to expect can help tame those nerves and help promote a more smooth and successful recovery. In this video, we will discuss everything you need to know about recovery after ACL reconstruction. And stick around till the end to find out what the current best evidence says about bracing after ACL reconstruction. This video provides a general overview of the recovery process after ACL reconstruction and is for educational purposes only. Current best practice suggests the use of criteria-based protocols, meaning that you should only progress through each phase of therapy when you have hit the established milestones, no matter how far you are out of surgery. With that in mind, the timelines discussed in this video are an estimate, and the rate of recovery will vary. The information provided is not intended to be a substitute for the instruction provided by the treating physical therapist or surgeon. Developing a plan with your orthopedic surgeon is the first step in the management process. Your orthopedic surgeon will help you plan your surgery, including selecting a graft type to reconstruct your torn ACL. The most used grafts include bone patella tendon bone and hamstring autografts, as well as allografts. The outcomes of all of these types of grafts are very good overall, resulting in high rates of patient satisfaction. But they do have their own pros and cons that should be taken into consideration based on your sport or work demands. For more information on how to select ACL grafts, check out our video by clicking the link on the screen. Another very important consideration is your surgeon's experience with the type of ACL reconstruction. Many orthopedic surgeons specialize in a method of ACL reconstruction and are more familiar working with certain types of grafts. Regaining strength and knee range of motion prior to surgery is very important. You want to avoid going to surgery tight and weak. Those who lack knee mobility prior to surgery have been shown to be at higher risk for developing post-operative knee stiffness. Additionally, those with quadriceps weakness going into surgery have been shown to be at greater risk for persistent weakness with some experiencing muscle deficits as much as one to two years after. Nothing a few weeks of pre-surgical rehab can't fix. This time will also give you a chance to meet with your physical therapist and make a post-surgical rehab plan. At the end of prehab, you should have minimal to no swelling, full knee mobility, and good strength of the injured knee. ACL reconstruction surgery is performed using minimally invasive arthroscopic techniques. The surgeon will make small incisions which will be used to insert the various surgical instruments. A larger incision will be made along the front of the knee or on the inside part of the knee depending on if a patella tendon or hamstring graft is being utilized for the reconstruction. No incision is required if you are receiving an allograft, which utilizes tissue from a cadaver. An ACL reconstruction takes about two hours to complete, and once you recover from the anesthesia, you will be provided crutches and a knee brace to help protect the newly reconstructed ACL graft. The brace will be locked in extension to protect the graft while walking until sufficient control of your quadriceps muscle returns. There is nothing that will strike fear into the healthcare team more than post-operative knee stiffness. Post-operative knee stiffness can significantly delay recovery and impact post-surgical outcomes. The early post-operative phase is a crucial time as progress and range of motion during this phase will set the tone for the remainder of the rehab process. Priority should be placed on restoring knee range of motion as well as waking that quadriceps muscle up. It is critical that you keep your knee moving frequently throughout the day. This is good for reducing swelling and restoring range of motion. Being able to straighten your knee is of particular importance, as this is required to walk normally. It is common for people to keep their knee flexed while lying down for comfort. Do not do this. Instead, prop your heel with a pillow to help straighten your knee. Bonus points for elevating the leg above your heart, which can help reduce the swelling. Pain will initially be the biggest barrier to regaining knee range of motion. Do yourself a favor and make sure you consistently ice and take your medications as prescribed. It's okay to unlock your brace to perform your exercises, but the brace should remain locked in extension while walking until your physical therapist gives you the okay to unlock it. You should continue to use crutches and you will eventually be able to wean down to one crutch once pain and swelling are controlled and you can comfortably place more weight through your leg. By the end of this phase, you should be able to straighten your knee fully, bend your knee to 90 degrees, demonstrate a good quadriceps contraction, and be able to perform a straight leg raise without your knee bending. During this phase, swelling and pain should continue to diminish. You should have regained enough quadriceps control where you are now able to walk with your brace unlocked. 
Rehab will continue to focus on maintaining knee extension mobility, regaining full knee flexion mobility, and enhancing muscular endurance through low weight, high repetition exercises. If you are still having a tough time activating your quadriceps muscle, you may benefit from the use of electrical stimulation to get that muscle functioning again. Electrical stimulation is a device that sends electrical impulses into your muscle to help to get it to contract. Graft protection and managing pain and swelling continues to take precedent, so don't overdo it. By the end of this phase, you should have full or very close to full knee mobility compared to the other knee, no swelling, and be able to walk normally. Pain should continue to be controlled as exercises are progressed to avoid irritation at the graft harvest sites in cases of an autograft reconstruction. In cases of hamstring autograft reconstruction, you may be required to further delay hamstring strengthening exercises for up to 12 weeks post-op to avoid overstressing the healing tissue. Emphasis during this phase should be on improving single leg strength and balance and improving cardiovascular fitness. You may be feeling great at this point in time in your rehab, but don't get ahead of yourself. The graft is at its weakest around 6 to 12 weeks post-op. So even though you are feeling a lot better, continue to follow the advice of your physical therapist and stick with the program. By the end of this phase, you should have full knee range of motion, have at least 80% of the strength of the various muscle groups compared to the other leg, and have no pain or swelling after exercise. For more specifics about the suggested muscle performance tests that could be performed, check out the link in the description that will take you to an excellent resource. Time to bulk up. The focus of this phase should continue to be on progressive strengthening to address remaining strength deficits and regain muscle size. If sufficient strength has been attained, you can begin to transition to some maximal sport-specific training, including a return-to-run program in light plyometrics. To help you acclimate to these more impactful activities, it would be beneficial to perform these exercises in an aquatic environment or on a specialized body weight supported treadmill. Emphasis during this phase is on power development and making sure you can comfortably and effectively accept light repetitive impact through your legs. If you don't have access to these modes of training, it may be a good idea to hold off until the next phase to avoid overstressing your knee. By the end of this phase, you should demonstrate normal single leg balance on your surgical leg, good single leg squat form, at least 85% of strength in the surgical leg compared to the other leg, and no pain or swelling after exercise. After all those months of hard work, it's time for the fun stuff. By now, you should have a solid strength base that is nearing that of the other leg, allowing you to perform more sport-specific movement drills. Specificity is the name of the game at this phase, with training consisting of drills that simulate what is required for your particular sport. A heavy focus should be on landing mechanics and control during deceleration. Training should include a combination of running, agility drills, jumping and hopping, as well as continuation of your progressive strength program. Change of direction training and modified sport drills can also be introduced later in this phase once sufficient movement control is achieved with the more basic agility and plyometric drills. Due to the increasing intensity, sufficient rest and recovery time is important to minimize soreness and maintain a high level of performance. By the end of this phase, the surgical leg should demonstrate at least 95% of strength compared to the other leg, score at least 95% on hop tests, and you should be swelling and pain-free after exercise. Finally, time to get back at it. This is where you start to incorporate simulated sports drills into your training, beginning with controlled and non-contact situations, and progressing up to live practice drills with eventual games. During this time, you will focus on reconditioning your body to the demands of the sport. You should also continue to supplement with a strength and plyometric program during this time. It is important to note that the reconstructed ACL has not fully healed and can take up to one to two years. Because of the long healing time, it is suggested that athletes avoid returning to sport prior to nine months after surgery. Research has shown that for every month that return to sport was delayed up to nine months, there was a 51% reduction in re-tear rates. After nine months, there appeared to be no difference in rates of injury. So do yourself a favor and wait. You don't want all that hard work to go to waste. Prior to returning to sport, you should be confident with running, jumping, and cutting at full speed and have no pain or swelling after play. So what about bracing? The decision to brace depends on a variety of factors, including the type of sport and the position you play. A functional brace is available in a variety of forms, and some surgeons may recommend a hinged knee brace or a neoprene sleeve. 
But research has demonstrated that a rigid knee brace does not provide superior outcomes when compared with a neoprene sleeve after ACR reconstruction. Neither bracing option has been shown to prevent post-operative injury, decrease pain, or improve knee stability. So ultimately, the decision on whether to use a knee brace depends on your personal preference and confidence. Recovery from an ACL reconstruction is a long journey and requires an individualized and structured approach to ensure success. Despite the provided timelines, you should not progress to the next phase of rehab until meeting the established criteria for that phase. The rate of recovery can be highly variable from person to person, so be patient and stay the course. And remember, you should wait a minimum of nine months and meet all return to sport testing criteria prior to play. This will ensure a full recovery and reduce the risk of re-injury. While well, I hope you like this episode of Physio Show, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel to receive more physical therapy related content.